Welcome back, this is Ink, and in today's problem, we want to determine the voltage, instantaneous power, and the average power for the inductor. Here we can see that we have a periodic triangular waveform, which is given for a current. So we can use that and our expression for the voltage across the inductor to figure out our, vo figure out our voltage. So the equation for voltage is going to be VT, so that's for inductor, the inductance times how the current changes through that inductor. So the derivative of the current. I'm going to label my points on my triangle. So A, which is a ramp. So you know by when we have ramps, we can use graphical method, but I'm not going to use that today. So that's A, B, C. I'm going to write a generic express equation. So my function I of T minus I, which I'm going to call my amplitude. So just put maximum to be a minimum equal my final. Say if I move from A to B, so I'm going to put that. Let's use S position. So that would be my final position minus my initial position. And I don't want to use time in the denominator because I'm going to use time. So I'm going to use that as rise over run. So I'm going to use that as run. So run, final run minus my initial run. And now I'm going to use the time. So that would be final time minus initial time. And that is the expression we're going to use to calculate the or to come up with the function for the waveform. So we can go ahead and do that. So the first one is from zero to one millisecond. So we have a disk then it's discontinuous. So then we can just do it continuously. So then from one to two milliseconds. So we can go ahead and do that. So the first one is I of T minus zero, we're moving from A. So that will be I of T minus the magnitude of the current at that point. So that is zero. Then we know that is zero. Our final position is going to be B, which is four. Initial is A, which is zero. So that will be four in the numer numerator. And then final position is one millisecond initial is zero millisecond so that will be one millisecond in the denominator and same with the time so our final time is going to be t we know it's one milliseconds but we don't want to do that because it's discontinuous at that point so it's going to be t and then our initial is going to be zero milliseconds so if we then move over this four which now becomes positive four and then simplify that four divided by 0 0.001, which is one millisecond times T. We then come up with the equation for current from zero to one millisecond is equal to 4,000 T. Now, if we do the same thing for the second half of that triangle, so we're moving from one millisecond to two millisecond. Now we're subtracting C, B from C. So this would be C, so that would be zero. Subtracting B, B would be four. So we have a negative four in the numerator. Two milliseconds minus one millisecond is still one milliseconds in the denominator. This, however, now, our magnitude that we're coming from was four. So that would still be a positive four over this side. So then we come up with for one millisecond to two millisecond, our equation for our current is equal to negative 4,000 T plus eight. So we can then go ahead and use our voltage relationship for the inductor and calculate the voltage. So that would be if we differentiate 
i of t from 0 to 1 milliseconds, we get, so that is going to be L, which is 0 0.05 times the current, the differentiation of the current, so that's 4000 T. So we know that's going to equal to 4000. And that gives us 20 volts. Now if we do that again, for the other part of that expression, zero, and this becomes a negative 4,000. So then we see that we have negative 4,000, which is equal to negative 20 volts. So our graph that we end up with, we have a positive 20 from zero to one millisecond. And we have a negative 20 from 1 to 2 millisecond. So our inductor voltage with respect to time, 2 milliseconds, 1 millisecond, negative 20, 20. So that is our graph for our inductor voltage. So our inductor voltage is a piecewise function. So that's 20 volts, negative 20 volts, and that's from zero. Not that I should probably just do that. It's one millisecond, and that's one millisecond to two millisecond. And that is our inductor voltage. Now we can go ahead and use our voltage graph and our current graph to figure out the instantaneous power. So the instantaneous power is multiplying V times I. So we can go ahead and do that. If we do that, we see for both current and a voltage from zero to one millisecond, we have two positive, I was, well, two positive amplitude. However, this is changing so forth. It's still positive, it's a positive slope. So we're just gonna call it a positive amplitude. So 20 times four, and it's changing um, at a rate of one, one millisecond. So then we're gonna come up with the instantaneous power graph that looks like this. So that's P of T with respect to time. So 20 times four is 80. So we have a, we have a amplitude of 80, however though that that amplitude is changing with a rate by one millisecond. So thus, and that is changing like this. That should be straight. I don't know why my lines are curving. And then it's discontinuous at one millisecond. So we gotta drop back to zero. At zero, we then, well not at zero, from one millisecond to two millisecond, at this point at this time, we see that the rate of the current is decreasing. So we have a negative slope. And notice again, that we have a negative slope for the voltage waveform. So we know that it's going to decrease decrease from negative 80 to zero. So what that means is this is discontinuous. So it's going to fall to negative 80 then it's going to increase because we have negative and negative, which gives us a increase. So here we have 80 watt and we have negative 80 watt. So that is our instantaneous power waveform. So we know our instantaneous power at this point is basically put that in uh, piecewise. That is 80 watt for, let's just write that zero to one millisecond, negative 80 watt from one to two millisecond. And that is our instantaneous power. So we can 
definitely calculate the average power for the inductor. However, though, that is going to be zero watt. The reason being is that if you look here, the waveform is symmetrical. So we have a plus and a minus. And if we integrate this, because of the discon discontinuity, <laughs> my bad, the discontinuity, these words sometimes, we have to stop, we have to integrate from those two points and then add that to the integration of these two points again. So it's just basically integrating from zero to one and then from one to two and then adding those. So a positive plus a negative, they're symmetrical, meaning the integrations are gonna be equal, thus it's gonna come out to be zero. So that means the average power for the inductor is zero. However, though, the instantaneous power, as you can see, is not necessarily zero because in this period from zero to two millisecond, the inductor is absorbing. So let's put that. So it's absorbing power and then it's delivering power. When it's negative, it delivers power. So basically, when P of T is positive, the inductor is absorbing power. And when P of T is negative, the inductor is supplying power, delivering, supplying. And the average power in the inductor is zero. So therefore, the inv so if, you, if you think about it, um, a resistor, the average power for a res resistor will never be negative. It's always absorbing power. However, inductors and capacitors are energy storing devices, so they can store energy and they can give energy. And if you're storing energy, so your instantaneous power can be positive and the delivering energy can be negative. So that's it for um, today's problem. Uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.